What do you think of when you hear the word seaweed? Is it that slimy green stuff on the shore? Or is it potentially a multi-million pound industry for the UK? Here at Sam's we're hosting the Global Seaweed Summer School, where experts from around the world are trying to figure out how this industry can move forward in the future. Global Seaweed is an initiative that is uh, funded by the UK Natural Environment Research Council and essentially it deals with trying to introduce uh, seaweed cultivation in Europe and especially in the UK. I suppose the general idea behind Global Seaweed is that the um, UK government is really recognised. We are at the very, very early stages of introducing seaweed cultivation in Europe and in the UK. That We do have a lot of potential in the UK and especially in Scotland here but we are nowhere near um, having a, an industry as major as in other countries and other parts of the world. In Asia, especially Far Eastern Asia, including Korea, Japan and China, seaweed is a big thing. And, you know, seaweed is very profitable product. Only in Korea, Pyropia only one species have a $2 billion market, employing 20,000 people. Uh, we're here at the Port of Ulin seaweed farm run by Sam's. It's a 100 by 100 meter grid, so it covers a one hectare area, which we have then got 24 long lines of seaweed. We've got lots of seaweed growing here within this one hectare grid. So the concept of global seaweed is really to look around in other parts of the world where they have a much more major seaweed industry and at different stages of its development as well and to learn the lessons from the rest of the world in order to do things right here I suppose and to anticipate all the problems that we might face in the future. We have a lot of pyropia farms in Korea and they have a major problems every year because of diseases so I'm trying to learn or study uh, what these this diseases are, what pests they are. I think this seaweed focused workshop is, is very useful to start to look at that bigger picture and see where next seaweed production might go and what are the lessons that we can learn from the last maybe three decades of seaweed aquaculture in Asia that can help us uh, do it better in other parts of the world. I have been mostly interested in the Japanese species of seaweeds uh, present into Europe and the way they arrived in Europe. So mostly they arrived actually uh, with uh, oyster aquaculture, uh, with importation of, uh, of oyster from Japan. I will look at pathogens of aquatic animals and really I'm interested in, in the important ones that cause problems for aquaculture, so yield limiting pathogens, viruses, bacteria and parasites and so on, not only in the UK but more, more across Europe and globally. And really, really keen to look at how experiences within that industry over the last 20 or 30 years can be transferred into the emerging seaweed industry as it comes about in, in, the, in Europe. I think the seaweed industry in Scotland is a very new one, although there, there has been in past times a very important one. But in recent times, it's, uh, it's going to grow, and it's important that people get together to discuss what they're working on, both on a scientific and academic side, as well as on a practical side, because we're dealing with things from ranging from food, fertiliser, pharmaceuticals, there's a wide range of, of things that are going to come out of a developing seaweed industry. The main species we're growing are Saccharina latissima, sugar kelp, and Alaria escalenta, which is uh, highly prized for food. We're working on a couple of projects to look at the best methods for the cultivation using different techniques to, to optimise the production of these species. I work on the disease of Saccharina deponica because, you know, uh, Saccharina deponica is a very important uh, economic series worldwide. I'm a microbiologist by training and I'm interested in how um, bacteria in particular but other microbes interact with seaweeds in both positive and negative ways. I think we all need to talk to each other a lot more and I think there is definitely a move towards that in regulation at the moment of interacting with industry and preferably at the earlier the stage in the development of it the better because not only do we not know all the answers, we don't necessarily know all the right questions to ask because it's so new. And talking to people this week who've come from different countries, different aspects of the business or academia, we all have quite different takes on things. And sometimes we even use the same language differently. 
So the more we interact, the better. And I think Global Seaweed is a great initiative for starting to do this. Sooner or later, I'm sure you will start a seaweed cultivation in Scotland because first, it doesn't need a lot of manpower to run a quite profitable business. And you have enough shorelines. So only one or two people can make millions of you know, dollars in, in Korea right now. So I just as a guest and as a friend, I want to recommend you guys be more aware of the future uh, in you know, aspects of seaweed aquaculture in Scotland. So by the sound of things, this industry is going to keep growing and you're going to see a lot more of it. This is Sam's News. Thank you.